I'm in Rockford, Illinois today, and I'm walking through this neighborhood trying to locate the house where a brutal massacre happened. A guy by the name of Simon Peter Nelson murdered his six children. So in this video, I'm gonna walk down and show you guys the house where that unfortunate event took place. And then after that, I'm gonna go to the cemetery and show you guys all six children's graves. Now, Simon Peter Nelson was 46 years old and he was married to a woman named Anne. Six kids, their names were David, who was three, Roseanne, who was six, Matthew, who was seven, Andrew, who was eight, Simon Peter the third, who was 10, and Jenny, who was 12. Now, Simon Peter Nelson, I believe, went by the nickname Pete, as I have read many articles, and they keep mentioning him as Pete. So, in order to make it that much simpler, I'm just gonna use the name Pete from now on. So anyway, so Pete was 46 years old and his wife Anne was 38. The day of the murders was on the evening of January 6th through the morning of January 7th, 1978. Pete had gotten a hold of a rubber mallet and a hunting knife and he subsequently killed all six of his kids inside the house. Now, when investigators arrived, they found a complete and utter bloodbath of a scene. They found five-year-old Roseanne and her 12-year-old sister, Jenny, in their second floor bedroom. Their heads were bludgeoned and they had been repeatedly stabbed. Now, what kind of makes this worse was the pet dog was in the bed with them. It was a dachshund and its name was Pretzel. And Pretzel was found with its throat slashed as well. So Pete had taken the time to kill the family dog while it was probably hiding in the little girl's bed. Uh, the four brothers were found in the third floor bedroom and were killed in a similar fashion as their sisters. The detectives on scene described the killings as absolutely brutal, but also silent and methodical. Pete and Anne, their marriage was pretty much falling apart. They had constant bickering and fights over the last few months before the murders, and so Anne had actually purchased a hotel room several days beforehand in order to try to distance herself from her husband and take some time away from him. So the detectives believe that the murders were brought on because of the marriage falling apart, but also the fact that Anne was going through with a divorce. Pete told his boss what was really going on between him and Anne and that their marriage was falling apart. Anne had set a bunch of rules for him, and these rules were that he had to stop drinking, had to go to the gym and start losing weight, and that he had to shave his facial hair off. The next day when his boss saw him, Pete had shaved off his beard, gotten a haircut, and Pete had told his boss that he just enrolled and started some workout classes at the YMCA. So his boss had seen that Pete was seemingly trying to follow Anne's rules and to try to fix their marriage. The morning of the murders, Anne had called her attorney and asked him to go ahead with the divorce proceedings and all the paperwork. The attorney then called Pete and told him he wanted to meet so that way they could go through this divorce paperwork. At about 5 p.m., Pete called his boss back and said he was going to try to work things out with his wife. 
and that he needed an advance from his paycheck and that he wouldn't be into work for a while. His boss agreed to that and so Pete went down to pick up the paycheck. Pete asked his friend Ernest to drive to the hotel where Anne was staying to try to talk to Anne out of the divorce. Around 7 a.m., this would be on January 7th now, a man that was believed to be Ernest, Pete's friend, approached the motel clerk and told her to call police as there was trouble brewing in room 425. When police arrived to the hotel room, they discovered Pete had actually shown up and he was beating his wife Anne in the bathroom. He was then handcuffed and of course taken to the police station. Anne had asked Pete about the kids and Pete had said, call a priest. No, actually call two priests, then call the police. He then told Anne, I've killed the children and I've done it in such a spectacular way that you'll never work again. He then later told Anne, they're all dead. How do you feel now? So obviously Pete had most likely killed the six kids to try to get back at Anne. And the way to do that was to kill those that she loved and that would be the kids. So he essentially took out his frustration and anger about his divorce with Anne and took out that anger on the kids. Pete was convicted in court and he was sentenced to a range of 100 years to 200 years. Pete finally did pass away in prison though at the age of 85. I'm at the Calvary Cemetery here in Winnebago, Illinois. This is like 15 minutes outside of Rockford. This is where all six of the Nelson kids are laid to rest. Now, before I show you their graves, which they're right behind me, just wanted to mention that another murder victim, his grave is actually right over here in the same cemetery. Now there's three of the kids here and then three more over there. So keep in mind that this is Simon Peter Nelson III.
uh, I just feel absolutely terrible. Like six young kids who had literally their whole lives ahead of them and all of them wiped out just because the husband couldn't deal with the fact that he was losing his wife. If you're new around here, my name is Harmon. And if you enjoy these kind of videos, just make sure you subscribe. And until next time, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. Stay safe out there.